My brothers and sisters, Sukuna Kaisen is now on full steam. The King of Curses is looking invincible right now, and no sorcerer alive is providing an answer for how to actually stop him in his tracks. Recently, Sukuna just unleashed Black Flash like he was the main character, and he was riled up by his own ambition to prove that Jujutsu is the greatest. And now Sukuna is invigorated by the sparks of Black. His reverse curse technique will return, and his cursed energy output will return, so eventually his domain expansion will also return. And at that point, as our characters have been hinting time and time again, Sukuna will overwhelm them and they will lose. And the crazy part is, Sukuna Kuna still isn't even going all out. As of chapter 253, Kusakabe makes it sound like he will solo Sukuna and only he is left to fight him alone. However, inevitably, more options will present themselves as this fight continues, and today I wanted to consider Hakari Kinji's role in this fight versus Sukuna. Should you really bet on Hakari? We cannot forget about one of the last heavy hitters and the immortal sorcerer. Akari will need to defeat Uraume and make his mark on Sukuna. And right now, there's no need to beat around the bush. Uraume is unable to kill Hakari, and Hakari has yet to beat down Uraume. Clearly, their fight is etched all over the battlefield as it is covered in frost. Uraume is Sukuna's loyal servant, and they are one of the most deadly sorcerers due to their frost curse technique and output. This fight has really been put on the back burner. Most of it has been off screen. However, it hints at both of their respective strengths as fighters, almost like his battle versus Kashimo, because neither opponent can put each other down for good. Against Uraume, Hakari is able to unleash his domain expansion and he's able to keep them occupied as he applies pressure with his jackpot state. Whether it's for a strategic purpose or a narrative purpose, the point of this fight is likely to stall. Uraume is a very dangerous wild card in this battle considering the potency of their frost curse technique and now they seem to be able to stand against jackpot akari pretty well it's just what you would expect from an elite hand era fighter they have reverse curse technique high output good durability and a very proficient use of their curse technique together with sukuna they would be very troublesome having to worry about a monster like uraume while fighting the kim curses would lead to disaster so promptly the sorcerers needed a solution to such a threat. So the answer is to make them fight an immortal sorcerer, and as the fight progresses, it will be a testament to both of their strengths, just like how Hakari versus Kashimo went. However, more problems arise if Uraume wins, and I'll tell you right now, that is not a good look at all for Hakari. He would lose face. This is a sorcerer boasted as stronger than Yuta Akotsu on a roll, so losing is not really an option, especially after he said that they would all win. If Uraume actually wins, the cast is just that much more screwed because now they have to deal with another monster and they lose a heavy hitter. So Akari has to deal with Uraume and get out there. Akari's mindset is not like the sorcerers of today in the modern era. Akari is crazy and boldly displays his curse technique prowess. Uraume says he is not human. Akari isn't mindful of his surroundings and he will easily destroy what's in front of him with his overwhelming sorcerer power. Even his own body is just a tool of destruction, and due to his jackpot immortality, he doesn't even care about sustaining injuries or losing limbs, he just goes wild. This mindset is a part of what makes Hikari so strong. Even compared to Gojo, Hikari doesn't worry about loneliness despite his strength. He isn't caught up by future or identity, yet all he desires is the fever that he gets when he gambles. To him, life is a gamble, and he loves the fever. This line of thinking is almost evil in a way, and it's very similar to Sukuna's line of thinking to have an overwhelming sense of self. However, Hakari's fever burns the hottest when he's helping out his peers. If Hakari was to help out with Sukuna and move past the Raume, his powers would actually be somewhat useful. Compared to Yuta, Hakari's curse technique isn't as versatile or as much of a counter for Sukuna, yet it still is extremely 
extremely troublesome because for 4 minutes and 11 seconds, Kari is immortal. Raume points out when in Jackpot, Akari's reverse curse technique regeneration speed exceeds both Gojo and Sukuna. This is why he is immortal because his reverse curse technique stems not necessarily from Hakari, but as a result from him gaining infinite cursed energy from his curse technique. His body automatically prevents itself from breaking. In terms of regeneration speed, and in that single aspect, it surpasses Gojo and Sukuna. Theoretically, while in Jackpot, Sukuna's regular dismantles and cleaves probably would not kill Akari in that state. Despite whatever you think about his durability, his reverse curse technique regeneration would cover him. This may also apply to Malevolent Shrine since Gojo was able to survive Sukuna slashes by outputting reverse curse technique at its maximum. And that being the case, there was also a point where Gojo was tanking the slashes without RCT, but regardless, reverse curse technique is something required if Akari faces Sukuna. In fact, that would be his entire game plan. Sukuna was thoroughly interested in defeating a heavenly bound Maki Zeni, an opponent with zero cursed energy and has physical prowess that may even have surpassed his own. Yet he was able to defeat Maki and prove himself as the strongest. Akari presents another problem. He is the opposite, an unkillable sorcerer with infinite cursed energy. And much like Kashimo's line of thinking, the most optimal way to beat Akari is to endure a jackpot and kill him after the song ends. But that's how losers think. If they were to ever fight, Sukuna would be presented with how to kill an immortal sorcerer. Hashimo could not solve this question, and soon, Uruume may actually reveal how to kill Hikari. But if Akari were to ever face Sukuna, then that is the hurdle that he would likely face. And besides immortality, Hikari's attack power is pretty explosive. His cursed energy output is always on high, and Akari's base stats like his speed, his strength, and his power are also incredibly high in Jackpot. However, against Sukuna, Jackpot Akari is not putting down Sukuna with just strong punches and kicks. Sukuna has been purpled, stabbed, slashed, beaten, and he has still not broken a sweat. Being realistic at the moment, there's nothing Akari really has or he can do that would put down a tank like Sukuna, or even seriously damage him. It's likely when he fights, it's going to be an endurance match, which is a huge gamble considering he's fighting Sukuna, the King of Curses. Akari can die during his domain round, or if Sukuna can cut off his head with the World Slash. Akari's reverse curse technique is strong, but if you cut off the user's connection to the brain, then they cannot heal. And all in all, it doesn't seem like Akari would fare any better against Sukuna than anyone else. His best move is just to stay alive if he can. And although Hakari's domain expansion is strong in a tug of war, if Sukuna was to regain Malevolent Shrine, it's a very big if, if even Hakari wins a tug of war inside the domain expansion, but we all know Malevolent Shrine is an open barrier and destroys barriers from the outside anyway, and Hakari losing a domain battle that way is not good at all. Hakari's confrontation is a very interesting matchup considering their mindsets as sorcerers, and soon we may actually get to see it. Yet, I think if it does happen, Hakari's gonna have to jump Sukuna with someone else like Yuji. And in that circumstance, his real value may shine because Hakari won't stop despite his injuries or whatever damage he sustains. He will keep up the pressure. That makes for a very useful offense to have an immortal ally that can always keep Sukuna's attention and create opportunities to strike Sukuna. It's interesting, many of the quote unquote strike team members fighting Sukuna right now don't mention Hakari in their specific plans. Even in the recent chapters, it's hard to ignore, Maki is still considering Yuta as their fallback and she doesn't even know if he's alive. Hakari isn't even a passing thought, so he may possibly be Jujutsu High's secret weapon, however it's looking like his main purpose right now is to keep Uruume at bay, yet he has to do greater things than that. Three heavy hitters have already fought Sukuna, so Gege is either saving the best for last or he just isn't going to use Hakari like that. Ultimately, I still think Think it's gonna come down to Yuji in the end regarding Sukuna's downfall. However, some of the strongest sorcerers in the modern era have to leave their mark here, and Hakari is the only one left to do it. 
but when it comes to his unrelenting fever, you certainly can bet Hakari will cook and Gege will use him efficiently. So my brothers and sisters, what do you think about Hakari Kinji? Will he win against Uraume? Is he ready for Sukuna? Hell, is anyone? But please comment down below what you guys think. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe for more. But with that, I'll see you awesome guys in the next one. Bye-bye.